Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's the League of Evil here again, and this time we have an interview. Um, those who have seen our two other streams might notice that I'm not doing the intro right now, but since we have um, DocuFox with us, would you pl kindly please just introduce yourself? Hey everyone, um, yeah, my name is, uh, I guess, DocuFox, or Morgan, you can call me. Um, or at Circle C Seven, which is my Twitter handle. Um, yeah, I'm just a random, no-name person who kind of uh, has been working on a little project, um, yeah. doing a documentary. And wow, uh, I'm getting a bunch of audio. Yeah, one second. Uh, Shiza. Um, give me one second. Yeah. Okay. There you go. My bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. At least it yes. wasn't my my fuck up this time so <laughs> yeah it, it's always me man i i've never fucked to that um uh, no worries. but uh yeah i'm working on this documentary um and it's been going pretty good I, i've gotten a chance to um meet a lot of really cool people like through the process of it um cool. and you know i'm still still meeting a lot of cool people yeah. so yeah um well how how did you because the the documentary basically started as a or the documentary series started basically as a documentary about Gamergate. But how mm -hmm. did you get involved in Gamergate? Um, well, I mean, I, I, at that point, you know, I'm kind of uh, in that same group of people who just kind of have been there since before Gamergate was a thing and just kind of watching everything happen. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest and tell you, like, my from where I came uh into this whole mix, I was watching all the stuff that happened with Zoe Quinn before Gamergate really even happened. Uh, so, you know, I, I, you know, I got a chance to form my opinions before the media got to, cause I was watching, uh, I was watching her kind of like leave this trail of drama behind her everywhere she went, like all before August ever happened. Uh, with the you know Wizard Chin and um, uh, oh, with the that. Rebel Jam and with uh, you know Fine Young Capitalists. So when yeah, there was, a, there was you know, a Polaris Game Jam, wasn't there? A notorious. Sorry, what's that? There was a Polaris Game Game Jam that was kind yeah. of notorious. It was like sponsored by like some like Pepsi type type people and all that stuff. Like it was a it was a big like first of its kind like uh, game jam that would have become like a reality TV show and stuff. And they wanted to hype it up like a, a like a reality TV show and add a bunch of drama and infighting into it because that's what gets ratings. Um, yeah. And and so well, right, the producer... Right person like, to, to hire then. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> not at all. Like the, the, the producer uh, tried to spur on some drama and he said something that fit into like, you know, what counts as sexism uh, these days. So it like she went on a kind of like a, a, a tirade and and kind of nuked the entire project um and then left to do her own uh, her own jam uh so yeah yeah that was the thing yeah so you know I, I got i got a chance to see i got a chance to see all all of that drama happen before gamergate um and so i was well i guess well knowledgeable or knowledgeable about the whole situation going in you know I, I got a chance to really see things happen as they did just like a lot of other people so i mean i i got him I, I didn't really get involved but i you know i i, I watched and i listened um yeah. uh well, what, I, I i didn't actually catch a lot of this this is you know mm -hmm. I, I was uh I, i've been a gamer all my life and i wasn't aware of the um of the sort of infighting drama bullshit because i didn't pay too much attention to the community mm. uh, but yeah afterwards i have heard a lot of shit from from different types of people that have said yeah that basically giving me a very good impression of how everything led up to it and of course i paid attention to the to the mainstream media and the way that a lot of gaming stuff was covered in in, in the mainstream media yeah, which was 
crazy, basically. It was. Yeah, uh, it was I, didn't, I didn't recognize any of of the stuff that I or people that I knew and, and yeah. stuff that I, you know, recognized. For me, for me, it was just it was it was really odd because you know you're kind of expected to choose a side. To me, there weren't sides. I was. I was there, so nobody could tell me what happened. You know, like I, I, I just I saw things happen. So it's like, uh, you know, you can't convince me that this didn't happen, <laughs> or that this person isn't the center of all the drama and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, that that that's you know that was kind of my my thoughts going in. You, you know, you can't you can't uh, convince a firsthand witness. Well, uh, well, in your yeah, eyes, what? Yeah. How did Gamergate start? Was it the uh, was the was it the Gamers Over article that sort of tipped this giant Jenga? Um, yeah, I mean, like you know, you're gonna get you know, like that that kind of thing definitely like kicked a lot of people's ass into gear, and they were like, nah, you can't you can't go around just shit talking because we'll you know we're gonna do something about that. We're gonna you know, we're going to talk back. Um, so that, that definitely got a lot of people in, into gear about um, what's going on. But yeah, I mean, it, there's, you know, a lot of people have said this before, but, you know, it, it was long before Gamergate actually happened that, um, you know, there have been issues. But when, when, you, when it comes to Gamergate, you know, there were two kind of groups that were going in, um, you know, or there, there's more, but like two main groups were people from V and people from Pole. And they had kind of different goals as to what they wanted to, um, what they wanted to really talk about. So, um, you know, there were people that wanted to talk about the crap about, you know, the long, the long-standing issues with yeah. uh, game journalism. And then there's also people that wanted to talk about um, the like creeping cultural authoritarians that have been trying to get into games, like they've done with comics and yeah, and like yeah. a bunch of other things before it. So you know that that those are like the things that kind of brought it all together, um, and uh, Gamergate's been picking up allies and stuff along the way. Yeah. Well, how? I mean, um, I I came into this all, all of this in in September. That's when I started noticing okay. a lot of um, shit because I, I I didn't read too much of the, of mm-hmm. the online gaming media i i i watched a lot of I watched a lot of videos basically i watched uh, uh total biscuit and and so on to get recommendations yeah. for for my newest games that's that's how i got my gaming news was basically through youtube and um uh and but as as i noticed it it it, it seemed i've never seen this kind of attack from the from the gaming press onto its own audience, basically. Yeah. And that- well, that, that's the thing is like, it, it was like, they were the people who kind of defend it. You know, when Jack Thompson kind of did his thing, yeah. the gaming press had none of it, you know? Um, but that, that was the thing that surprised a lot of people is that they thought, you know, they would kind of have their back, I guess a little bit. And yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. No, no. Did you want to say something, Evil? Not particularly. I'm no. just agreeing with that point. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but uh, the the thing that I've noticed as, as it moved along, as this year has sort of progressed slowly <laughs> into, uh, well, we're into the 13th month now, or mm-hmm. 14th month, basically. Yeah. Uh, what is your impression of the gaming industry, uh, how they have responded to this? Um, my impression of the gaming industry as a whole. Yeah. Um, with triple A's, uh, I think, you know, they're just looking at it as like a, another wave of some nonsense that will just kind of go away. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm not even entirely sure if I believe that I'm just kind of it's my impression for now, but like, um, with the indies, like they, I don't know. The indie clicks want to like use this as a way to kind of just, you know, I guess strengthen their clicks, <laughs> essentially. Um, and then the you know the non-click people 
are just kind of stuck in a situation where they can't really comment on anything because, you know, yeah. you know, they they'll be fucked otherwise. Um, I don't know. I think I don't know when it comes to like the gaming industry. I think that everybody just wants it to be over so that they can go back to doing what they love to do. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. It's no. it's it's a little strange, but I, one of the things is like. I like talking to, like, I, I got a chance to talk to um, Jay Truman. He was like a AAA dev in the UK. Um, you know, like those those guys. You know, if you can get if you can get a hold of those game developers and like let them tell you what their impression is, like it means so much more. So much yeah, more because yeah. like, I I mean I'm a I'm like a garage dev. Like I, I I'm a 3D animator and you know I'm getting into game dev, but I don't have. Uh, the same grasp of the no, but I, I, I just wanted to get your impression of 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 what it was like, and and mm -hmm. yeah, I think that you, it, it it's just uh, I think that the dev scene actually reflects a lot of the gaming community. Is that yeah. there's I mean, two there's sides? Too, yeah, yeah there, there there's two sides, and there are a bunch of people caught in between. Yeah, who just want to do their thing. And, I do yeah, think I totally that there's that. a difference, though, that you get with the indie devs and the uh, AAA devs. Yeah, like the way that they're they view this whole deal. Yeah, I get. Uh, I I can totally see that one as well. So what what is your what is your overall impression of of the GamerGate community then, or? if we can um, call it a community because it's, yeah. it's basically a hashtag and people use the hashtag to sort of vent their frustration over, over the gaming media. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do, I'll do some, I know some folks want to just like, will probably want me to just establish like what, you know, what I think Gamergate is before we go into it. Cause like, yeah, just like what you said, like Gamergate is community. It's a hashtag, you know, like yeah, it can get a little confusing when people talk about, uh just gamergate in general but um you know i'll put it this way you, there's like uh multiple gamergates <laughs> if yeah. you will um you know so there's um there's gamergate the hashtag which is you know it's whatever it's way that people uh people use it as a tool uh to you know a rallying point where people can discuss stuff um there's gamergate the the community uh of people that you know, are always there to talk about things regarding scandals that, it, you know, from Gamergate. Um, and then there's, uh, like, you know, there's, like, many little Gamergate communities within them, I guess. Um, but, like, when it comes to what I've seen from people, like, you know, so my whole deal with the documentary was, um, like, I wanted to, you know, there was there were people that were doing you know, like there was like the Sarkeesian effect documentary that we're trying to like find other ways to refute people, you know, detractors of Gamergate and stuff. I wasn't really focused on that. I knew that there were people who were better than me who could dig and find all this other stuff. Um, but I, that's not where my skills lie. And I, I thought that there was a great thing that I could contribute to discussion, which is to actually find out who's involved in Gamergate. Like, being there from the start, I didn't really have an issue finding out who's who in, in no. Gamergate and, and all that stuff. Like people make themselves known. Like if you if if I wanted to find somebody to talk to in Gamergate, I could list off, you know, a hundred people for you. Um you know, that could give you a good explanation of what Gamergate is and a coherent argument for stuff. You know, it's not it's not that hard, but um, you know, journalists always fall back on that, oh, we don't know who to talk to because Gamergate's so nebulous and yeah. all that, all yeah, that yeah, bullshit. Yeah. Right, even, right? even though Brad Glasgow managed to do yeah. that pretty well. So. Exactly. I mean, I'm and, following 4,118 people, and at least 75 percent of them are involved in Gamergate in some way. Yeah, and and, and that's the, that's the crazy thing is like, like just say you don't want to do it, man. Like <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. they'll make a bullshit excuse. Be um, honest, and we'll you know. Yeah, I can I can respect a, a little honesty because yeah, I mean yeah, I don't totally. like I'm not saying gamer gets a pleasure to dig into you know um. <laughs> no I totally I totally get why people want to stay away from it to some certain degree I mean I I have stepped back I've never really commented that much as 
as maybe I should have, but still mm-hmm. it's, I took a step back a couple of months ago cause I, I was getting fed up with a, with the e-drama and yeah. the bullshit. So but that's like, that's like your, your choice, man. Like that's, yeah. you know, there's nothing that you should have done. That's just what you do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so what gave you the idea to, to sort of make this documentary? Was that <laughs> Actually, just, yeah. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a combination of things. So, um, back in, Oh, what was it? Um, like December, I'm thinking, um, there was, uh, okay. So uh, I don't know if you used Reddit at all, like for KIA. Um, uh, not a lot. I, I am on Reddit. Oh, but, like uh, back then, back then. No, no, time. no. Back, not back in December. That was a shit storm. So yeah. yeah. Um, like I, I, I tried to use all the different forums cause I didn't really know where we would be able to talk about that stuff. Yeah, um, exactly. uh, so I just tried to stay tuned to everything from YouTube to, to 8chan and, and all that good stuff. Um, so um, what was it? So there was a there was one person um, named Kiwiku. I don't know if you remember him uh, or that name. Uh, that name. Oh, okay. Yeah, the name rings a bell. He was somebody in Reddit who um, I think he had a post saying that, you know, he got harassed by anti-Gamergate and stuff like that. But um, he was just somebody on Reddit who was like, kind of like a big ideas man who like never actually got anything done. No yeah. offense to him, but, um, but he was, he was just a big ideas man and, and like always had ideas. And he, one of the things that he wanted to try to do was like create PR stuff for, for, uh, for Gamergate and that kind of deal. Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't really for a lot of his ideas, but one he did have was to like try to summarize, um, what Gamergate was about and like easy videos, kind of like the explaining Gamergate in 60 seconds type deal. So that neutrals had a little bit of an easier way to to wrap their head around the the whole thing, mm-hmm. um, and uh, one of his ideas like was was decent. And I, um, me and, and some other anons or people from Reddit at least, um, uh, you know, we kind of put together a little video, like we were putting together like a little video series um, that was just explaining the some of the concepts. Um, that were being talked about in Gamergate, um, and why people are fighting for you know for these things, um, you know like censorship and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and w- I didn't actually release it because um, you know uh, one of the things was you know it, it's it is hard to get people to kind of stick to a project and, and that kind of deal. We we got the first video done, but it, like I didn't release it because it wasn't we weren't able to like kind of stick around and do the whole series. Cause it was just at that point, it was like me and one other person that were putting it together. Yeah. Um, uh, and so that, that, that happened and you know, it, it, it came and went. And, um, at that point, you know, there were people that were putting some videos together, like the, it was like Gamergate in 60 seconds type deal. And so yeah, I was, I, I just, yeah. I like left it at that and, and it was like, okay, that'll, that'll, that'll be fine. Um, but, uh, sometime later there was, uh, you know, it was maybe like April or something like that. Um, I was like talking to Otter Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and, know, uh, I know him. <laughs> yeah, he's he's awesome. Um, I was yeah, talking to him. Right. He he like posted something on Twitter. Like, you know, I wish that somebody would like, you know, put together like a documentary, uh, kind of showing like. Yeah, I remember like, actually who, talking to him about that. Yeah, like yeah. he's like, I wish somebody put together a documentary, like, you know, showing all the people in Game or something, something close to that. And I was like, well, you know, I might have an opportunity to do that, so it might be interesting. And I just kind of like, I said something like that, and we we like talked for a second, and that that was it. Um, but I like mulled the idea over in my head, and then uh, from there, I just like I went to like Reddit and stuff, and like threw the idea out there and said, you know, would anybody be interested in that kind of deal? And, you know, people, you know, people said yes, for the most part, and was just like, you know, and, and so I just, I, I looked at that, and I thought, well, what, you know, what good would that do? And how could I do it and stuff like that? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it from there, it just kind of, uh, you know, it's, it worked a little bit, I, I got a, uh, got a lot of people who volunteered to like, oh, yeah, I'll help you do this thing, I'll help you do that thing. Um, so it, it it helped me because I, you know, I don't have all the resources to do that shit on my own. So no, no, uh, I know, I know, I know the feeling. I, 
you know, I've worked in the, in the film industry on and yeah. off. So I'm actually, I actually have a documentary project myself laying around nice. that, that is, it's very dear and near and dear to my heart. It's, it's nothing mm. political, but it's, uh, I've never actually talked about this on stream, but mm -hmm. I could go into it. it there was a, uh, a friend of mine, uh, who, uh, died, um, during, uh, the, a film production. Basically. Oh, wow. And he was the producer. He was a very young producer. He was 27 years old when he died. And uh, he was uh, basically my my closest friend at that time. So I have been working for almost four years getting the... Uh, I've done all the interviews and everything. So I've been working mm -hmm. for four years trying to get together enough finances to actually get this up and running because I need somebody mm -hmm. to actually edit it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but I, I know... I know how hard it is to sort of get things together. And one of the ways that you wanted to solve that was by, by um, doing a Kickstarter. And yeah, it how, was like, so that yeah. was a, that was a interesting process. <laughs> <laughs> I the imagine. Kickstarter, well, it was a, it was an Indiegogo, but I, um, Oh yeah. You know, yeah. I, so it was a crowd. Yeah. Indiegogo. Or so, yeah. So, yeah. So one, one of the, one of the like, interesting things about me is like, I, absolutely hate being like indebted to someone yeah like to anyone um but you know i just kind of i went for it i i had said in my um i had said in like like early on even in the first reddit post i think i said you know it's possible we might be able to do some crowdfunding but like i don't really want to and like i just want to see if you know if i can kind of pull together resources from everybody and maybe everyone can contribute or something like that yeah. um to the point where I don't really have to do a crowdfunding campaign for it. Um, and then like, as I started kind of putting the project together and figuring out what I would need, I was like, oh, well, you know, at, really at the end of the day, you can't, you can't really do it without having a, a real budget. So, you know, I just kind of, I, I, I decided to go for it. You know, pe there were people that were like making the point like, oh, well you can do, you know, if you wanted to just, you know, meet all these people, you could do uh, Skype interviews for everyone. But, um, you know, I was like, that's great. You know, if you want to just do like a YouTube series or a YouTube video, yeah. um, and like that's, you know, you, some YouTube, you know, you'll get a small YouTube audience, you know, a couple thousand people will watch your video and then that's it. Um, but if you want to have something that you can like, you know, show to a, like a big online audience, you know, get it on places like, I don't know, freaking hulu or netflix or something like that you can't have a documentary with all skype interviews no just, no no you need to no one finger. wants to sit through that <laughs> yeah yeah like definitely. i know i know gamer gay people will sit through that but like of course no one of course but they have a special interest in this and if yeah you exactly wanna, like and and if you want a, a a series that a series that actually shows the gaming community as a whole and how you know not how deep it runs but how some things might be misconstrued by the mainstream media you mm -hmm. need to reach a bigger audience and yeah yeah absolutely and, and I, I just like I, I knew that going in and i was like I, i'm not into like half-assing it for people you know i, I want to i'm you know i really want to give everybody like you know bang for their buck so that that to me was the best way to to do it and i i, I budgeted it pretty well like there i mean you know people are like oh like the, the price for it was $20,000 and everyone was like freaking out. And I'm like, look, man, like you can look right now for other documentaries on, on freaking uh, Indiegogo and like they're kicking it up to like 50 something thousand dollars. Like th this is this is as bare bones as you get, man. Um, uh, but I, I, I can I can tell everybody that 20,000 for a, a mainstream documentary is nothing. <laughs> like that is that was literally like transportation like i had gotten yeah. people volunteering me uh equipment um and it, that would have been like transportation and food and just like a couple other little things here and there yeah. um but like it, that was that yeah it was you know me and um my my sister actually who was kind of working as like my producer just kind of helping me get the budget and all that stuff 
uh, as best as you know, as best as we could. Like we we fucking toiled over that shit. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. trying to, cause uh, yeah, like I said, like I, I didn't want to have any more money than I needed to get that to get it done. No, no, no. I totally, I totally get that. And and well, the thing is that when you when you produce something that that needs to reach a major audience. Yeah, the 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 argument many people use is, oh, what YouTube videos do not cost that much to produce. Yeah, but as you said, this is not meant to be a YouTube video series. This was meant to reach something bigger, and then yeah. you do need camera equipment. You do need a red camera, or whatever, to to really shoot what you need, and yeah, sound well, equipment yeah. and everything. Yeah. So, so honestly, like I would, I wasn't even going for that kind of like, like the the equipment we were doing, like you know, when you with film and stuff, you can get away with a lot. Um, it, it even if you have a little, like it, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We I had know, we I had know. decent we we had decent camera equipment, and we you know with if we just combine that with good lighting, we didn't need like a red camera because a red no, camera no, would no, that would have been the budget right there. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Uh, believe me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it just, uh, it, it, but. You know, if you really, uh, mm. if you light it correctly, yeah, of course. But if if uh, if you're on the go, then a you know, yeah. a red camera works very 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 that would well. help immensely. Yeah, yeah. But it, as, if it was just a YouTube series, then yeah, twenty thousand would be a lot. But yeah, but you do um, have but... do you do have people who've pissed away one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, so. <laughs> And made yeah. what like five videos, so I don't know. But but <laughs> yeah, speaking of that person, what do you think the the, <laughs> the impact of the Sarkeesian effect or or the debacle that was the Sarkeesian effect may have had on your Indiegogo campaign? Um. Okay. So I'll I'll, I'll tell you this now. Like I don't really I don't have much of an opinion uh, about the Sarkeesian effect, but when it comes to like feedback that I got. There were people who were saying like, "Oh, this is like Sarkeesian effect 2.0 or something like that," and uh, you know, I was like, "All right, well, okay." You know, I, I didn't have a response to it. It was just, you know, uh, I think for for a lot, you know, people do a lot of times look for a reason to like to not invest in something that they yeah. might have otherwise liked or something. But you know, that's not a that's their choice. So you know, I didn't have any ill will towards that. Um, but the Sarkeesian effect, like I guess they, what did they ask for, fifty thousand, when they did it? Uh, yeah, I think it was fifty thousand. Yes. Um, yeah. So you know, like, I, I, all right, I don't, I don't really like to talk. <laughs> I don't like to talk shit, but um, I, I looked at, uh, I think one of their videos where they were pitching the idea, yeah, uh, or something. Um, yeah. And I, I was like, I guess I was shocked that um, that people invested into it. I don't know, maybe maybe it's just like some like early night like naivete from like that. Or from maybe the crowd. Just, yeah, maybe just enthusiasm over somebody actually finally, you know, doing it and and showing the the thing. And and but you have to remember that that that. Um, you know, David Serini knew all the keyboard shortcuts. So, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I can't tell you how, how much I, I don't know, man. I can't tell you how much I, I, I just, my sides were obliterated. Yeah. When I heard that, um, <laughs> I just, cause that's all it takes, you know? I mean, no, look, listen, no, <laughs> knowing the keyboard shortcuts is a valuable tool. Um, but, uh, you know, it, I, I didn't, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> no, 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 no. It helps to have some sort of narrative, narrative structure. This, this is an evil stream. Yes. I, yes. <laughs> you, you, have, you have pleased the boss. <laughs> yeah. That is a, you cannot discount the, the ability to, to get those keyboard shortcuts, yeah. so I'll, yeah. you I'll, need I'll definitely I'll give him props on that. Yeah. Well, uh, 
<laughs> I just, okay. the, the thing is that, that, that there, the documentary was, and, and the documentary is needed because there has oh, yeah. been, the, there is some sort of, of, um, there is an ideological. You mean, you mean the, the, Sarkeesian, the Sarkeesian effect? Well, b basically some it, sort of. One that does Sarkeesian like the same. Itself? Yeah. One yeah, that, okay. that does this sort of, of, um, uncovering basically because mm. there is a there, there 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 is some sort of ideological as a leftist i'm a i'm, I'm a left-leaning guy mm -hmm. uh I, I grew up in in a in a pretty social democratic country i have benefited a lot from from having uh, a really equal society and uh yeah it it does work, but the identity politics that have sort of invaded the left as of the 1980s, it, it, it's, uh, yeah, it needs some, it needs uncovering and it needs some mm -hmm. sort of commentary. Uh, were uh, Jordan Owen and David Serini the right people to do that? I don't uh, know. I mean, obviously, I'll just say obviously no. I'll just, not. Basically. Yeah, I'll just I'll just say no because uh, just because of the fact that you know they're um, production wise they, uh, you know they just they weren't organized um, and it got to the point where you know a disagreement could derail the could derail the production. You know, at, at the end of the day, when I was working on my documentary, I had control of everything. Uh, to you know, so. There was not, not going to be a point where somebody could like, oh, I don't like you anymore. Let me go and derail your project. You know, like there was none of that. Um, yeah. So I don't know, man. I, I, I think that you do need people who, you know, you can trust to help you work on a project. But um, you have to have some control over your own project. Um, and when you get into a partnership, even partnerships um, have to have that like 51% 49% split yeah. where somebody's making the executive decision. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know the specifics on, on how their, their, like, I guess drama went down, but it doesn't matter to me because it, it, it just shouldn't have gone down to begin with. Um, no, no, there, there, there needs to be some level of professional behavior. And, and I don't, I don't, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, like understand the the like let's make response videos to to shit talk the other person thing um so i that to me is something that's a no-no as well yeah i, I i'm not I the most professional totally. person in the world but no that no, that's but, the, yeah but it, there there is this i guess i guess both of them came from this sort of youtube response video culture uh, okay that, that sort of made that more um appropriate yeah, I, I, for them I, I somehow to, to to sort of act out their their issues with each other i don't know i i just i just know that uh well the, look, yeah i mean if, yeah. If, you're, if you're saying that they, they come from that kind of culture i mean that's it basically means that they're just like that was like a, a popularity contest ideal for him. So yeah, All yeah, right. I think I think that was it. But I, I don't know. I don't know either Jordan Owen or Davis Arini. I have watched mm -hmm. a lot of Jordan's uh, videos on YouTube, and I like the guy. I like his commentary. Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know the details of the of the of that sort of. Uh, conflict it just seemed like there was a lot of well not a lot of it but it it gave me the impression of a uh, a sort of a hustling type of <laughs> scenario maybe the not skulls from, didn't do it for you? no the skulls did not do it for me you know i don't know if he has one or several but if he just has one and he moves it around everywhere yeah it just, i was I, I, like <laughs> I was gonna like, I was gonna be unprofessional uh, like for a day and like do do a video like talking about my documentary and yeah. just like totally 
totally copy the videos with like just tons of whiskey and and skulls everywhere. Yeah, like... <laughs> just sit, just sit on a throne of skulls and just. <laughs> I, I I didn't want to be petty, but like it, it uh, would have been it's, good. Uh, it's it's <laughs> he he sort of he, he, Davis uh, again cool. again. It, this is just my impression. I don't know the dude, and I don't know uh, Jordan either. Uh, but yes. Davis does give me the sort of impression of being a a a, a bit of a poser. I don't know, but that's just my impression of him. And yeah, I, I know. I know. I don't, I don't like. Wait, which one is uh? Which one is which? The, the Davis, bald one Davis is... is Davis is the 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 skulls guy. Jordan is the okay. the the long haired, gotcha. Hard hard rocking dude. I guess. I know that. I know that. Like the uh, with the the PUA stuff. Like you know that that's part of it. Is like you know some people think that they have to like pose to like. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a peacocking possible. thing, isn't it? I don't yeah. know. I, I have uh, never yeah, I've never seconds. been involved in that environment, so yeah. I, yeah, I, I think that's part of it, but like I, I don't know. It, it just I, I overall like the videos that I, I've watched from from them. Um, yeah. I, I've got I've got nothing about them personally that I I don't know them. So, but uh, from what I saw, like I was just surprised. I guess like that that so many people would don't I don't know. It I I have like okay, I've worked with like in that agency for a year, you know, while I was going to school for animation and, and, you know, I've learned film and photography, motion graphics, all like graphic design, all this stuff. So I've basically been like indoctrinated in the, in like high production value. Like I, I, I don't. So for yeah. me, it seeing something like that. It's like red flag central, you know? Yeah. Um, that's, that's the, that's exactly what I, and I, I mean, I'm not just, saying that like I make the best stuff. <laughs> no, no, far but, from you, it, but you, know? you do. You do have that ingrained in you. I mean, I've got like the eye to at least be like, this is yeah. decent. This is sketchy. This is you know pretty good. You know, like, I can tell that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's. I mean, for, it's, yeah. it's it's not <laughs> just a matter of 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 sitting in front of a webcam and actually just you know talking to the webcam. There is a lot of production that needs to go into uh, yeah you know, the, at least the actual a, a, work you know yeah and, there's, and, there's a minimum of what you've got to do i mean i feel like i did at least the minimum of what you got to do with yeah. even just like my little promo video you know um yeah. you know and, and but that still took a lot of work you know like i i mean and i was i dude i'm freaking blessed to have the friends that i i have and, and just the people that i've been able to meet because i mean yeah my friend that i went to school with I was like, hey, you want to help me with this little documentary project? He's like, yeah, what do you need? Like, well, um, I, you know, if you can like model a, a 3D car and like a map of the US and animate it, you know, I got two friends to put that together for me yeah. just for the little promo that I did, you that's, know? That's very cool. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's the type of thing that you, you sort of really appreciate in the, in the film community. We, I, we, uh, me and a friend of mine, did like a, a a music video for a Norwegian, um, uh, well, I guess it's industrial metal, but it's nice. borderline, uh, black metal. Um, mm -hmm. and we did like a music video for them now that that it's it's actually going to be released on on Thursday, and um, we did it over a weekend on a shoestring budget. Yeah, and you know we just had to have people show up on mm -hmm. completely without any sort of pay just <laughs> yeah. just lure them in with with alcohol oh, and food <laughs> yeah that's it right there like <laughs> and, and, and just and just do it community style and yeah uh, and it, it's it's uh it's uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of fucking work and that, that that's is the story of my a, life right there. yeah <laughs> and that's just that's just a three minute or three to five minute video but still mm -hmm. you try to get the best sort of uh, production value you can get for the money that you invested in it and mm -hmm. the more um the more money you um sort of invest in it does not necessarily re reflect the production value you need 
Yeah. To know you need to have an eye for what you're doing. And if you don't have an eye for what you're doing, it shows. And mm-hmm. yeah. that cost does the, not equal value. Yeah, exactly. And that's the impression I got from was it fifteen minute that fifteen minute clip that Arini released on YouTube. That sort of uh, intro. I don't know which one that is. No, and it was the one that he showed uh Sargon, I think. Okay. And and um Oh, yeah. oh, the his the fifteen minutes that he that he had put together of his documentary. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I heard that that was like it was not really too great. I don't know. No, it was it was uh, it's something that that you know I would have produced when I used to work as you know when I used to work as a as a video production guy for just yeah. making educational videos for for Coca Cola. And, okay, and, no. and and that sort of level where you rush it through, and you spend yeah. like uh, a week editing, basically something that needs to be in half, you know, half an hour. Oh. Shit. You know, what? I think I did. I think I did watch it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember there being a lot of like jumpy cuts and stuff like that. Um, yeah, jump cuts and 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 this sort like of it was really uh, jumpy. Yeah, this sort of. Uh, uh, like flashes and stuff of things and yeah it i didn't feel like he sort of you know it, it yeah like there, there's, there is a there is like an art to, to editing a little bit you know you got yeah, you do is. have to know there is. Uh, timing and pacing and all that stuff yeah so. exactly and it, 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 you, there's a rhythm to everything so mm-hmm. the the better you're at editing the the it doesn't help just knowing the keyboard shortcuts you need to know <laughs> exactly what kind of rhythm you it's yeah, <laughs> I just love I, um, I I love that fucking phrase. I mean, I'm yeah. sorry. I may that I, is, yeah yeah. I may <laughs> I may I may get David Serini after me after this, but fuck it, I don't care. I um yeah I with um yeah, but what what kind of format are you going for? Uh, so for the, for the for the documentary. All right. So when when it first started, um. It was supposed to be strictly like it wasn't supposed to be like a, you know documentaries exposing all these ethical breaches and, and stuff like that. It wasn't supposed to be that at all. Um, it was supposed to be uh, just a like a glimpse, like a window into who these fucking people are. <laughs> you know, yeah. like that that was it. Like you know, people spend all like their time online all day, um, you know, sh- talking about. Gamergate and like not actually knowing who they are. So my my idea was to like fucking go meet them. Like yeah. you know, I I messaged tons of redditors who I've seen, you know, um you know, talking about Gamergate, um you know, people on um on Twitter and stuff like that. And um you know, I would have I would have loved to try to get somebody from from HN. It's a little bit a little bit harder to do that. <clears throat> but um uh you know, just message them and saying, "Hey, like, you know, would you be down for an interview?" I I, I based it off of people who like um, contributed to discussion in a, in a in a sort of uh well, not really that, but like I I took what people said and like yeah. kind of logged that as this person adds an interesting perspective to Gamergate. So, um, you know, so I would find somebody who maybe is more trolly, and like that's the troll perspective from Gamergate, you know, yeah. um, or the, uh, or somebody who kind of comes from an anti-harassment, you know, standpoint, like, uh, like Sushi Lulu, for example, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, and I get in touch with those kind of people just to get the different angles of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that was kind of what I was going for. Then I, you know, figure out where they live, you know, they, they tell me where they live and stuff. And then yeah, I, yeah, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you know, dig deep enough to <laughs> you get no, the information no. to come like, to the door. Can I interview you? Okay, I'll I'll see you in Boston then. Like no, like <laughs> no, um, no. It it was like you know I I just asked them if they're down to interview, and then yeah. from there I get their their information. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. And then I just kind of uh kind of charted out a course to meet them in the most efficient way possible. Yeah. Um, as like kind of one big road trip. Um, and then you know that would save me tons of money because. Uh, it would it would actually double because I was going to end up moving to um, moving across country anyways, so I would have just kind of planned that into, you know, just my own personal like move, and then yeah. just 
you know, shoot it and then just edit, edit it all um, after I, I've moved and stuff. So, like, you know, that was just me fitting it into what what I've got going on in my own personal life. But, um, uh, you know, I, I did need like money to to make that happen. I think for just for the travel, it would have just been like, like, uh, you know, I don't know, for the travel and like food and stuff, it would have just brought it up to like ten thousand or something like that. Um, to like okay. get around places and 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 to talk to those people, so you know the that that part was what I really needed um like a lot of the bulk of the money for um and then the 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 five thousand uh would have helped with some other things such as like getting it onto platforms and stuff um like you know actually submitting it to those sites uh like Netflix and all that stuff so um that was like the format like what i was what I was trying to um what I was trying to do with that, the actual documentary. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. No, no, that, that, that answers, uh, that answers it really well. But, um, so, so basically you're thinking sort of talking heads combined with, uh, <clears throat> with, uh, with your travels then, or are you? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Thinking, yeah. It'd be a combination of, of, uh, so I, I was really, I was really debating this with myself, um, uh, bef like early on before the, the Indiegogo. Um, I was like, if I do this, that means that I have to like, not be like anon anymore. Like I can't just be a nobody. I have to like put my face to it and shit. Um, and that wasn't really what I was about because I'm one of those people who's like, what my ideas are are more important than like who I am. Um, and so I was like, but looking at the documentary, I was like, the story gets told a lot better when you like, when, if I'm there and you can yeah, see how you, I react to the people. Add, that are if you add a personal twist to it, it becomes, yeah. it, it becomes more relatable when you yeah, add it becomes, like a face yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, so I, w I was going back and forth between whether I just do talking heads or if I show my travels through, uh, and, and like the people that I, I'm, I'm talking to specifically. So like, um, I ended up kind of going with me being in there. Um, and then I was like, um, let's see, I, I kind of, I, I was going to do it like that talking heads. It would have, um, it would, because I have the ability to, I, I, um, and people that I know can help me with it. Um. I was going to add like uh, a good amount of visuals to it, like, um, you know, just as a way to break up some of the the live action shots and that kind of deal. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, so there'd be a lot of points where um, there'd be maybe like voiceover with, you know, articles being shown or something like that, just as like examples. But, you know, that that's pretty much, uh, you know, it's one of those kind of documentaries where, yeah, it is you, you combine time. all the tools to to sort of make it a a, a basically a, tra a well a travel into the like a, the gaming yeah. community and 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 getting a deeper impression of of mm -hmm. what the people were like. Yeah, yeah and I, and I did cool. plan on like talking to more than Gamergate people. Like it needed to extend beyond that. Yeah, because you need to get other people's takes. So, you know, I was planning on talking to um, people who. Uh, like there was one dude who was actually uh, trying to get in touch with. Um, there was a there was a uh, in a documentary. Um, I think it was put on Netflix called Game Over or something like that. It was yeah. about the the whole um, ET landfill thing. Yes, yes. There was like yeah, there was like somebody who who ran like a, a really big like game store or something like that um, in like San Francisco or something like that. Who you know. You know th those kind of people who, who are like big in the in the gaming community, but like aren't specifically connected to, to Gamergate. You know th those kind of voices are are interesting to hear from too, because you get to see what some kind of strangers are thinking about the whole deal and stuff. And uh, and of course, I was going to talk to people who are against Gamergate. I'd been in contact with with a uh, quite a few, and just uh, you know they're obviously more skeptical to get involved and you know they're more uh reluctant or whatever but um yeah, yeah i can i can understand that but it, it's it's important that that yeah both but just sides like, like realize that that it's it's people we're talking about on yeah. both sides and and yeah exactly that that was exactly my point which is like you know 
everybody's perspective matters. It's just like you gotta like, you, you know, you have to be able, you have to be willing to accept the person as a human being and then like dissect their argument after that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, totally get that. And like, you know, for 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 them, you know, they're just more reluctant, and you gotta kind of just like any aggressive interview, you know that that you know if, if somebody's expecting an aggressive interview, you just like treat them with kid gloves and then like you're, you're usually pretty good after that yeah they, 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 there's a there's a very special technique that you need to to sort of entice them in and and get them to open up about everything yeah. so yeah. um but i mean that said i didn't really have anything malicious for them like I, it wasn't about getting my point in front of their faces it's about them giving me their point yeah, so their, their point of view was, was yeah 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 was was the important thing and that situation so so what are your what are your hopes for for this documentary so you know like the 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 like indiegogo thing didn't get funded or whatever uh just fine um i did get messages from people like saying oh like you know fuck them like they don't understand what their project is and it's important i'm like nah it's like people will put money into what they think is good and you know i don't have any issues about that no but um but, I, you know, that said, I was like, you know, I did get, you know, some people that wanted to help me out and and get this project done because they, like, believe in it. And, you know, I, I think that, I mean, I, mean I, I still believe in it. I, I'll still, uh, it's still a story that I want to tell. So I'm kind of just going to tell it any way I can. So I'm using, like, the resources within my means and, and the time that I have available Um to you know just do the best i can and we we decided that instead of like a big documentary where i talk to the people of gamergate because i can't really do that anymore i can't like afford the trip to to go around and talk to people in person um i'm gonna just try to do it as best i can like i will have to do some skype interviews and it's not going to be on netflix uh you know uh, unless i'm extremely lucky or or whatever um but, but you, you're, uh, do, you're doing the best that you can. Yeah, you know, we'll, within we'll just, the means we'll, that you have, basically. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll um, you know, we, we decide instead of a big thing, we'll, we'll turn it into a smaller series, yeah. which will, which gives us a little bit more, you know, like it's a little bit more content than what the documentary would have been, probably, you know. But um, uh, and we get to talk about more topics than just the people of Gamergate, um. Which is cool, you know. I get to talk about some of the things that I, I mean, I've I've always wanted to talk about, like censorship and cultural yeah. authoritarianism and all that other stuff. Um, so, I mean, for me, it's it's a little bit of like a you know a, a win win in the sense that you know I took a bad thing and made it made it good. Um, you you made and, the best out of a bad situation, basically. Yeah. yeah. So you know, to me, it's it's cool. <laughs> you know, it's all good. Yeah, that's um, that's good. I, um, you know, I I was like debating. Um, whether or not I should do like, you know, people have been saying, saying like, oh, well, you know, just like uh, open up a Patreon or something so that you can try to still do the project. And I, you know, I've got, you know, for obvious reasons, there's like mixed, re you know, mixed feelings about doing a Patreon. I, I have mixed feelings myself. And uh, I think I'll, I'll do it maybe um, if like, um, you know, once, once I put out like my first video, if there's, I guess uh, a good enough reaction for it. Maybe yeah. I'll open up, up one because at the end of the day, I think that um, I think that if uh, if I can do like um, if I do a Patreon and I am able to get enough where I can actually travel, it'll give me the opportunity to still do that original idea of getting yeah. faces to the names and stuff like that, you know. And I can I, I can just like road trip up to a city, get you know talk to as many people as I can and then like, you know, and then, <laughs> then go back, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, there's the beauty of Patreon and, and stuff like yeah. that is, is, is basically that it's, it's enabling a lot of freelance people to do yeah. something that, that other people want to see. I, I want it to be, you know, I want it to be something that like, if you like what I do, then go ahead and throw money at me if you want. Um, but other than that, you know, it's like, yeah, it's not a big deal. I, uh, John Kelly was saying like there, get all your ducks lined in a row before asking for money. If it comes to that. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that is uh, a very good point. That is, um, uh, 
Uh, yeah, crowdfunding tends to be anti-consumer. Um, I don't know. I wrap my not, head around not that. Necess- um, not necessarily. I mean, the the problem with the problem with ca- uh, crowdfunding is that it 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 can give a lot of. Um, it's a lot of risk. Yeah, it's a lot of risk, and it's also. Uh, um, yeah, I know it's not an absolute, John. <laughs> uh, it, it, the the thing is that that it's uh, it, it crowdfunding can of, often lead to um, a lot of rich people may back someone telling a narrative that they want to be told. I will not yeah. kind of mention any names, but I think you know where I'm getting at with this. <laughs> yeah, like I I, I think um, you know at the end of the day it's like hey, you know if I ask you you know, to lend me five bucks and then, uh, you know, you expect me to, you know, pay you back or something, you know, like if I'm asking, if I'm asking for money and I, you know, I tell you, I'm going to give you a product later, you know, there's no, like once you've given me the money, there's no like obligation to like. No, 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 no. I, 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 yeah, that is, I totally get get it. Yeah. I get, I get what he means. And I've, I've done a crowdfunding project myself uh, for the book I'm writing. Uh, yeah. that I'm almost done with that uh, comes oh, nice. out in October, hopefully, uh, or during the fall at least. Um, yeah, send me a link when when you finish it, man. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll definitely send you send you a link. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, the thing is that you do sort of feel that um, that uh, at least from, uh, in my case i do feel sort of feel guilty if i can't first of all i didn't reach the 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 goal i set myself so uh the the people that actually did fund me will still get their products but you know mm. it took me a little bit longer than than i than i um than I wanted to, and that made me really guilty that made yeah, me feel that, really that kind guilty. of thing like weighs on you yeah, it does. So, it, so it, that's one of the reasons why, like, uh, you know, I was talking to Oliver Campbell, um, you know, towards the end of my my campaign. Yeah. Um, and he was like, you know, well, this is a good idea. Like, you know, maybe it's maybe you should just restart the campaign and try it again. And I was like, I don't know, man. Like, that stressed me out. <laughs> like, just the campaign stressed me the fuck out. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah if totally I can, get that. Like, you know that that to me is like, it, it, you know, and not being able to like deliver would stress me out even more, you know, like, or deliver on time or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. So I, I, I totally get that. It weighs on you. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's this, it's this sort of, uh, um, well, it's this sort of idea of, 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 uh, a lot of people using, you know, Patreon or yeah. crowdfunding to sort of sort out their own their own issues, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are, you know, there are a lot of flaws with the system. I guess I, I, I yeah, I'd absolutely. Like to say. People because, are definitely taking advantage of it. Yeah, that they, they. I'm not going to mention any names, but I've seen I've seen a lot of people you know, taking advantage of a very good system because the system in <clears> itself <throat> is not a bad idea. No, like, idea. I mean, John, it, John yeah. Kelly mentioned there too, like Shovel Knight is a great example of people yep. who stay true to their backers. Exactly. And they still do, they still come up with great content um, and and really have their fans in, in mind. And, and, you know, so that to me is a perfect example of how it can go right. Yeah, exactly. Shovel Knight is a good example. And then you have on the other side of the scale, double fine basically oh god tim so, Schaefer. uh yeah, yeah. yeah. don't don't get, don't don't get me no 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 <laughs> don't. we'll be here for hours it's it's uh it's just um yeah i totally get why people are wary of yeah. of uh of patreon and wary of i have not established any form of patreon mm. i might do in the future if people like my book and they they sort of want me to publish short yeah. stories online or whatever then i might do that but i yeah. don't want to do it on a basis of i like the idea of, of you know sargon doing it per video 
mm-hmm. you pay per video. That's a that's a good idea. Paying per yeah, because you can kind of cut it off at any point. You're not like. Yeah. promising a, a multitude of videos and then not only delivering one or something, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like stuff- and, yeah. L- like Anita Sarkeesian, who, yeah. you know, promised, when was it, 12? Yeah. And like, her, what have she done, six or something now? Yeah, I think, uh, Evil, you have the numbers for that, don't you? If he's still here. He went to sleep. Yeah, he, he's, he's in Australia, so he probably left us. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think, I mean, you're right. There's, um, de- definitely, uh, doing, doing it on like a smaller, like in smaller chunks is a lot better than trying to do a big ambitious project that is, uh, you know, that you, un- you underestimate. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. And, and, and I'm not saying that she went out of her way to, to sort of <clears throat> swindle her backers. I, I'm very naive. I always tend to believe the best of people. I, I can actually tell you what happened. Like, I, I, I already understand what happened with like Anita Sarkeesian's videos. She like, like you know, she she got the crowdfunding thing, and she, you know, I think she like did she did like some videos, and then um, you know, she got um, she got a lot of backlash for it, obviously, right? Yeah. Um, at that point, it that like enabled her to go and do talks and stuff, and then you know, the talks just took over. D- yeah. doing the actual videos yeah, yeah you know like it just it going and doing talks is you know you get paid for that shit so why would you stick around and do videos no, so that's exactly. why she that's why she takes such a long time to do them because she's not focused on that anymore she has no real desire to do those videos anymore because she's making so much more profit um going and doing talks about feminism yeah yeah i'd, I'd imagine that's it um it just it it it, it it uh not that it bothers me or anything but it, it just seems like yeah that is basically the reason why she she ended up in that that manner yeah. it's just it, i never backed her so so i don't know but uh it, yeah. it, it seems like that is a is the thing is evil any is he here <laughs> is he still here yeah i don't know if he's here I, um, it seems like he's gone dark. Um, yeah, but it, it, you know, it's uh, it's a uh, it's an interesting project. I I really I really Thanks, like um, the idea of uh, of doing like a gaming community video, so or or yeah. video series or uh, you know documentary series, what whatever you want to. Me um me personally, like, I like I like a lot of community like related things. Yeah. I, I love all the different gaming communities, like um, like the fighting game community, like it's got all these quirks and all, all these like all these things that I love about it. Same thing with the speedrunning community, um, you know, there, there's so many different communities that that make up the overall gaming community, you know, yeah. like to the point where like just gaming community as a general statement doesn't ever work out <laughs> because yeah. there's just so many different ones. Yeah, they, um, they're, 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 and, they, and they are diverse. They, yeah. They're really, really... I mean, I'm more of an RPG adventure mm-hmm. game type of guy. I do, you know, open... I like open world games and I, you know, sandbox stuff and, yeah. and, and RPGs and that's the type of thing that I like. Uh but I also have friends, you know, who who do fighting games and and love that. And you know that that's the beauty of of the gaming industry or the gaming community is that you do have something for everybody. So yeah. don't and, <laughs> get the need to force things. Into yeah, every, that, that's every why I'm so game. confused about the the whole gaming community is an inclusive thing. I mean. Dude, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm a black dude. Like, if it wasn't inclusive, I would have noticed, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the fighting game community has so many black people in it. And, like, yeah, I've noticed you know, that. The, what is that? I mean, I, I don't know, man. You, I don't know. Maybe somebody's going to, you know, make some argument that black people are more aggressive or something. I don't know. But, like, it, it's, I, I think that it's just, you know, people find little ways, like, you know, in black culture, a lot of times, like, shit talking is like a, a big thing. Like, yeah, and so, it opens up f- more for the shit talking yeah. culture. With the fighting, yeah, fighting game. I, that that's what I would assume is like the, the fighting game community um, 
just all, it, it allows for shit talking, you know, your pride's on the line. If you beat somebody, it's competitive like that. So, you know, I could see that being a reason for why, um, you know, but, but I mean, that's the thing is like, you can always find little, little niches where you can, you can jump into and find people who are just like you, yeah. but look nothing like you. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Exactly. And, and, and that is, you know, and you get to know one another on the basis yeah. of something that you love. And yeah. not on on the basis of your differences, and that's to me, that's yeah. the reason why I think the gaming community is so welcoming and so diverse and so anti the things that yeah. that they're so they're so not fitting the mold that is presented in the in mainstream media at the moment, which is yeah they hate all that is different from the white uh, sort of neck beard. <laughs> Uh, basement dwelling dude. Uh, oh Jesus! I just described myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, and 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 the, and that I that idea sort of it, 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 no, it's not it's not anything like that. Yeah, I, it, just, it I'm, doesn't. I've, it I've doesn't. Never met up, uh, so many, no, exactly. I've never met so many transgendered people than my time interacting with Gamergate. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I, uh, that's the same, same, same here. I didn't expect, um, I didn't expect so many trans people to, um, like, I don't know. Uh, I didn't expect, to, yeah, so many trans people to like join in on, on Gamergate. Like, I, I mean, I didn't really have an opinion of shit. I mean, before, like a year before Gamergate, I didn't even know fucking trans people <laughs> were like, like that. I didn't know it was a thing, really. You know? No, no, so I didn't. I didn't like, think that. I didn't know. That the, yes. that, that the community was so big in the gaming sphere. But then again, I didn't hang out uh, in any of the chants either. So I didn't really talk yeah. to a lot of gamers either. But it, it just it blew my mind. And I love it because every person that, that I've talked to uh, during my time interacting with Gamergate yeah. has been very much welcoming and it's been very much you know oh you'd like that game oh come on in we'll just talk about that instead yeah. of just you know focusing on the differences so i don't I, no i don't i don't recognize that's that's one of the reasons why i got involved in this because after talking to people for for about uh well basically a couple of weeks that's not the impression that i I, I was left with the impression that it sort of was pushed uh, mm -hmm. in the in the progressive media, you know, things like uh, yeah, TYT and and some of the HuffPost pieces and mm -hmm. David Pakman. David Pakman was actually the the guy who sort of dragged me into it into this because I was a huge, I I still am a huge supporter of him. So it it's just it it. it boggles my mind how wrong the gaming community has been presented in the in mainstream media and i don't know why that is yeah yeah it's yeah <laughs> i don't know like it, i don't know gaming journalism is just like the, the media in general is always has always been fucked and i i didn't i didn't know i for me i i didn't I didn't realize that it was going to get so weird. I think, I, I think that's one of the reasons why I, f I you know, always followed gaming. It was just like, things just got real weird, man. Like real fast. <laughs> Wikipedia totally freaked me out. Yeah. Um, like, you know, there was just people that you, I think there were, there were, um, people that we expected to be, uh, somewhat reasonable just ended up being totally, irrational yeah and it was like and, you know it, and all all of the fail safes were like fell apart you know all the all the mods of whatever forms that you ever you were ever involved in like they all just like f failed hard on what they were supposed to do yeah and then yeah. there was a there was a lot of uh there were a lot of people that i felt showed their true colors uh during the first couple of months uh yeah. and it really really bothered me it really 
it got to me because there were a lot of people that I admired yeah. that, that sort of went, you know, full, full Macintosh basically yeah. on yeah. gamers. And, and a lot of people I've sort of, that I used to respect had basically lost my viewership because of it. They've lost my, yeah. my, my support for it. And I've started supporting more, uh, you know, more smaller voices. I go to tech rap. I go to tech rap to, to, to read my news. I listen to, mm -hmm. I, I, I watch a lot of Leanna Kay's videos. I, you know, I still watch Total Biscuit and Jesse and Dodger because I love those guys. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but I, I, I no longer watch TYT because I feel it gone. It's gone to shit. Basically, it's no longer yeah. about. It's no longer about debating ideas. It's it now. It's basically you believe What's this. What's the popular or, opinion? Yeah, exactly. You believe this, or you're fucked. And yeah, yeah. It's it's it, it just uh, this the and and I think that that the that sort of cultural war that has been sort of brewing until over a year ago and sort of broke out a year ago it 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 sort of reflects the 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 political sphere very perfectly because it's a bunch of people a bunch of ideologues basically screaming at each other and not listening yeah. to you, to one another and it 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 really gets to me it really does. For me, it, like, I don't, I mean, this will, uh, not to be politically incorrect, but I mean, at the end of the day, like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit of, like, an old fag, whatever, and uh, I just, like, don't care too much for people that come in, you know, out of nowhere and, and start saying, oh, culture's got to be this way now. Like, you, you don't, whenever culture, like, whenever people try to force their culture on others, yeah. It, it always ends up bad, you know. Yeah, it it, it, it <laughs> yeah. never it never. <laughs> yesterday, it, yesterday, I, I I was I mentioned like the freaking you know Native Americans and and the you know yeah and the Americans you know uh, colonial uh, the colonies or whatever. But like it's like you know it's like you, you can't just go and force your culture on others. It doesn't work that way, you know. If no. there's a you know I uh you know to put it in a game uh. You know, reference like there's a, you know, Mass Effect. Yeah, yeah, I've played. Play I haven't this? played it too much, but I, yeah, I, I know, okay. I know the yeah, game. Yeah, like there's, there's the, the Krogans in there, are fucking an alien species, and they're all like war driven. Yeah. Right. You, you can't go to their home planet and be telling them, oh, you guys can't fight anymore. Like, it, it doesn't work that way. It's a culture, and they, their culture is based off of being abrasive and fighting whenever they can and showing dominance over each other you know like that's yeah that's how cultures work if yeah. a culture is one way you're not gonna change it because it triggers you or because it uh you know you don't like it um you know that so there's like you know and you can try to frame things to be like rape culture as much as you want but at the end of the day the, you know it's like uh, don't get me started on the rape culture it doesn't thing. It, uh, yeah just... like cultures don't work that way um, no, no, exactly. It, 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 the, the, the slow immersion of things is the way that you do things uh, in a non-conflict way. If you want a conflict, if you want bloodshed, that forcing things through is mm -hmm. how you basically do it. it it's the not bird. that I'm saying. I'm, it's not that I'm saying that violence is justified if you, if you, you know, if somebody goes in and says, no, oh, you can't do it this way anymore. But th that is how you get an re a reaction. That's how you mm -hmm. you get a reaction from people that 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 feel under attack, that feel threatened. Yeah. And 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 the gaming culture, uh speaking as somebody who's bullied as a kid, yeah. yeah I recognize yeah. the shit that some of these people try to pull. And mm -hmm. it's it's exactly the same type of shit I went through as a kid. So and, yeah, and that's that's what I saw. That's what I saw from the very beginning. It was like 
you know, it, all it did was remind me of what, you know, gaming used to be growing up, which was some nerdy shit that nobody was, nobody was interested in. But yeah. the second you get, um, you know, new, better tools from like Unreal Editor where anybody can make a game right away for free. All they need to do is have a little bit of knowledge. Um, you know, you have all of these people um, popping up onto the scene saying, I make games too. You know, but have no investment in in the gaming uh, like community. No, exactly. Um, they, they they think it's a way that they can mine for for some dollars. Um, you know, or they they want to just be in the crew of uh, you know in the in the click. You know, so they're working on their indie game. It's like it's like these fucking same San Francisco people who are like oh I've got a tech startup, oh I've got a tech startup too. Like you know, it's like. All these Starbucks fucking, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so it's like you know, uh, to me, it's it's just like, uh, you know, it's the same thing. It's a, it's it's the California gold rush. You know, it's like everybody's yeah. coming over because they see it as a way that they can make money. But you got all these Mexicans here, who uh, you know, like it's whatever. You know, like so I, I think that's like. Uh, you know, it's just colonialism at the end of the day. Like, it, yeah. it, it, it's happening with the internet. It's happening with gaming. Um, you know, and it's no, it's nobody's fault per se. Well, but, uh, kind but, of Big but, Bang's theory, Big Bang Theory's fault. Yeah. Well, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's no one's fault in particular. But it's no, no, it's no, no. I'm not, I'm not blaming. You know, I'm not blaming anybody, but it's it's it is it, big I, I it, it's it, it's partly a factor in this that that sort of being, being a nerd, nerd is cool. Is cool then it's the, yeah. it's the hipsters and and stuff like that. You know, yeah. like being a nerd is cool. All that stuff. Let me have a Transformers T-shirt. Like, like I, it's like I I think that like uh I think that when when you get when you get those kind of people coming in, you know, they see the culture that has come up out of it. But they don't understand what has created that culture. You know, like it's everything from, you know, like, you know, there's a reason behind the like why people do things a certain way. Like, you know, people say, "Oh, gaming is not a meritocracy. That's that's BS. It's a way for you to to bring down women or something like that." No, it's like when you go to a group of gamers, they're playing whatever. Let's say Pac-Man, right? Yeah. Like, each person's gonna take a turn. Uh, on the on the fucking pack man table, and you're gonna you're gonna put your quarter there. If you're you know to to say it's your you know your turn's coming up, uh, when that person's over, they're gonna try to get a high score, and then like you know you can go there and you can beat their high score, and like if you beat their high score, you're the better gamer at Pac Man. Like like that's all just little culture stuff, but like I don't know for some reason it doesn't seem like people see that. You know, so they see people talking shit at each other and they think that they're just being like, you know, horrible, aggressive people and stuff like now. It's like, no, I just beat your high score. It took me a lot of work to do that. Like, you know, I'm going to talk yeah, shit exactly. now. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really simple. It's it's, uh, you know, put it in a term that I don't usually use. It's the touchdown dance. <laughs> the what? The, you know, I. I I, I, I don't watch American football, but I do get oh, some oh, of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So so when you when a player actually uh, you know scores a touchdown, he used to or I don't know the rules. You do a little football. showboating. Yeah, you yeah. do a little showboating. It's it, yeah, it's it's that is actually part of. It's part of the game. Yeah, it's part of the game, and it's part of yeah. It, it is it is part of male uh, a particular male behavior, I guess. Yeah, allow. Nah, not yeah. even. It's no, like no. girls do that shit too. It's like it's yeah, not, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. But it's. It, I I think that that sort of behavior is, is is uh, a perfect example of it. It's a it's a real life example of mm. of that sort of behavior. I guess. Yeah, like absolutely. I, you know, I I I don't. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm not quite sure like where people are are, are fucking up on, <laughs> on like, you know, on the issue of of why this is not a, a big deal. You know, like I, it seems like there's too much, um, there's too many connections being drawn. It is very like almost like conspiracy, like conspiracy theorist kind of like how how these 
how they how people try to make like little things like that linked to to broader cultural issues yeah but I, I, I think I think a lot of it I, not to go all political uh, but I, I, I've been um, watching um, a, it's a it's a Norwegian uh, documentary series called um, Janavosk, which is basically brainwashing mm-hmm and it's a show that shows this sort of conflict between social science and and uh, the natural sciences or or more biologically mm-hmm. fronted ideas. And I do think that a lot of this t- sort of tends it tends to go back to that sort of um, divide between the people that think everything is a social construct and therefore we can change it or we can force through a change uh, mm. instead of a lot of be biologically impaired or bio- a bi- biological imperative. Uh, it sounds like cultural engineering. It's like, yeah, yeah. Basically. Nothing's wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I, and I, 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 it's not that I, I, I don't think that we might, have some issues but i i think they're a minority i think they're a minority in any civilization where where you have um where you have an advancement or you have a real equal society which mm. which i think most of western democracies are they're real that they're they're equal and people have sort of gone back into what they 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 do what they feel like doing. It's not I don't know, man. That sounds like wrong thing to me. Yeah, I but I am kind of yeah. Maybe I am a bit of a wrong thinker. I don't know. Maybe no, it's I I agree, man. It's it's I don't know. It's absurd to, to I don't know. It's like it, it's the you're right about the sciences. Like they like there there's a whole section of science that's just like letting itself become like befuddled by this shit. You know, like they're they're overthinking some of these stuff and, 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 and trying to do a little cultural engineering as well. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's plenty of, of, of like useful idiots in this, um, in this whole deal. And, um, and a lot of them, you know, are dressed up as scientists too. Um, so I don't know, like, I think that, I think that there's probably like, whenever you look at stuff like this, um, that involves money, like the gaming industry has got a lot of money that it's got a, you know, that that has like that's waiting to be taken advantage of, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's always going to be people who try to like you know take advantage of it as much as possible. So I, you know, you might have you might have somebody like that who's like trying to you know put together some you know something that allows them to do you know some fucking you know just to try to like force an agenda just to yeah make- yeah yeah. But I do I do think that generally. The people that are actually fighting for 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 that side, if you want to put it like that, I don't think they're evil. I don't think they're, oh, yeah. they're fooling people. I genuinely think that they believe this. It's it's the same rule that I apply to to um, religious people. I'm an atheist myself, mm-hmm. and I genuinely think that religious people in general are they're they're good people who just want to want the best for everybody therefore they're in this yeah. sort of state of mind and 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 i just i, I may be a real naive well i'll tell you what yeah i'll tell you about that like uh you know it doesn't matter what your ideology is uh, i think a lot of people get um you know and uh like and it, it's n- no one in particular but a lot, a lot of people want to attribute like i guess religion itself to be the thing that is like makes people bad or whatever, but I'll, I'll tell you what the common denominator, uh, <laughs> with, with, uh, with bad people is just that they're fucking bad people, you know, like yeah. they, uh, you know, because you can find bad people outside of religion. It, when you look at, when you look at a lot of like r- religious stuff, it doesn't tell them to be a fucking asshole. No, you no, know? true. It, 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 they, they find a reason why they can be an asshole. And that, that's really the case for, for a lot of things. And and same thing happens with, with feminism. Same thing happens with fucking MRAs. It's like, there's going to be people who find a reason to be an asshole, like the ends justify the means. Yeah. And uh, it, no. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, 
there are no bad uh, there are no bad tactics. The tactics yeah, yeah, it's only bad targets. Yeah, that's not a very very nice thing to say. That's like that to me. That is um. So you know, I I've I've always read um up a lot about um about like stuff like sociology um yeah uh people's thoughts on altruism and stuff like that um shoot somebody's calling me oh uh, uh but um basically like I've, I've read up about that stuff a lot because it's just something i'm interested in like how people work why people do the things that they do um and without fail it seems like the greatest evil always happens when people allow themselves to um distance themselves from responsibility yeah. Um, whenever somebody's just like, I'm just doing my job, or I'm just, you know, I'm just trying not to like rock the boat, or, or you know, like a lot of times, uh, you see those people like are in the, the pivotal position to do the most harm. Yeah. Um, and, and so, like, you know, th that's what I saw a lot with, with Gamergate. It was a lot of people who just didn't want to rock the boat because they saw a lot of people making a fuss. Um, and if they said anything, that they'd be the tar the next target, and like that, that's not great, you know. A lot of people can get hurt that way if you yeah. decide that you don't want to speak up. And I don't like to pressure folks, but you know that you you do have to think about like you, you know your place in the world and how you you know what you do you're yeah, responsible and for, and that, that that goes for everyone. I mean, like yeah. you know, you know, like whatever. Like if you think that you're in a place that might not be super inclusive and is shoving people away, whatever. Like you might have to say something, but like that doesn't mean that you're forcing your ID, Id like ideology on somebody and making things more inclusive. Um, but I think that, you, you know, everybody partic participates in like doing somebody really something. wants to get a hold of you. Yeah. Holy crap. All right. Let me, let me get this, I guess. Sorry, man. Yeah. Um, Evil, are you there? No, I guess I guess I'm all alone now. Um, uh, let's see, are there anybody in the chat? New. No. Hey, I've <laughs> I've got to like take five minutes, so I'll uh I'll be right uh, back. Again. Yeah, I'll I'll um, I guess I'll just inter uh, entertain <laughs> the one. Sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> well, if you if you feel like it, we could wrap up right now and then just yeah that, that could be cool and uh, um, so if you want to shill yourself um and just shill the documentary yeah um well yeah if you uh i mean if anyone is interested in talking with me sharing their experiences in gamergate i would absolutely love to talk to you um just go ahead and go to at circle c7 um on twitter or circle c7 at gmail.com or like you know circle c7 at whatever social media thing and uh i'll i'll find you um so uh yeah go ahead and and hit me up yeah and uh i guess i i, I could chill for dr evil as well he's uh dr evil he's at dr evil gamer on twitter and yeah he's also the head of the league of evil i guess uh, he's, a, he's asleep yeah he's a, he's asleep it's it's <laughs> it's late late where he is um and my name is uh well i am Mirkep messiah uh also known as jan helge uh i am at i'm on twitter at jh lilwick in one word and uh this has been an interview with uh from the for the League of Evil, an interview with DocuFox or at Circle C Seven, and uh, thank you again for for um, doing this interview. I hope you enjoyed it. I yeah, man, I, it. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, and uh, I guess uh, we'll see everybody at least next Friday when we do another of these streams. So have a good one and sleep tight, everybody.